Welcome to the Secure Connections Podcast, a weekly audio and video series brought to you by IOTSA, the Internet of Things Security Services Association. I'm Brian Sherman, Content Director for IOTSA, and joining me for today's episode is our special guest, Dan Wensley, CEO of Warranty Master. Dan leads a spirited team of channel professionals who help IT service providers sell more and service less by automating the various warranty-related aspects of devices they manage for their clients. Today, we're going to discuss how the global pandemic is impacting businesses and ways MSPs can deliver additional remote services while increasing value for their customers. Uh, a very timely topic and a serious t- topic, and I can't think of anybody I'd love to talk about this more. Um, welcome back to the Secure Connection podcast, Dan. Thanks, Brian. It's a, a pleasure to be here. I, we've got some interesting topics, obviously, with what's going on in the world today to cover, but uh, look forward to the conversation. Thanks. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a timely topic, as I said, but it's also something that, uh, you know, many MSPs are struggling with. They're doing a phenomenal job, I know, of being asked to do some things they haven't before. So I'm looking forward to getting in that conversation. But for those uh, who may not be familiar with Warranty Master, can you just give us a brief overview of the organization and your channel focus? Yeah, absolutely. So we're 100% channel focus. Uh, we are helping IT service providers sell more and service less with automated asset lifecycle management. Uh, Our application is used by over 7,000 partners in 76 countries, and there's so many synergies of the value this application is bringing to IT service providers around managed services, remote services, uh, better automation, lowering of service delivery costs, internal optimization, and driving top-line revenue and sales. So uh, it's been, you know, you you know my background as as well as anybody coming from an RMM and security background over the last decade. It's been it's been really interesting to see how assets and and managing of the assets under a managed services umbrella in some cases are still being done in a very antiquated fashion and got left behind a little bit. You know, and I'm not talking hardware as a service here. We're just talking about the rotation of assets and and the management of the assets lifecycle. Uh, definitely, um, and I know you know from our experience. You you've been you mentioned RMMs and others, but you know a couple of decades worth of experience. You've probably seen a lot in the channel, you know, from nine eleven and and all of the various aspects. It's, we're kind of treading unusual times here, doing things that many MSPs have not been asked to do. Um, and I'm seeing, as I mentioned before, a lot of them step up, a lot of remote work uh, shifting themselves, as well as helping their clients. But how has the global pandemic affected Warranty Master as a business, and, and what steps have you taken so far? Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of things there, Brian. I mean, on 9-11, you know, we, we, you and I have talked about this previously. On 9-11, I was on a panel on managed services, um, you know, incredibly in, in the channel um, in Toronto with, with other representation from New York. So you would think that would be, you know, the, the worst it could be in, in our industry and in our market going through that. And then obviously the economic downturns had their impact on our industry and on our businesses. And, you know, I find myself drawing a lot of as many parallels as I can back to those days. Um, what did we do? What, what could we affect? What was the impact for customers and our channel and our industry? Uh, and drawing as many parallels as we possibly can. And this is certainly an unprecedented time. Um, I don't think anybody has the answers right now. We're doing what we can do. Um, but certainly trying to draw on any experience we have uh, back from those days. Um, Warranty Master, as an organization, we made the decision uh, today being just, I know this is being recorded, so we are, this is changing so rapidly, so it's probably important to put this in context. Today being Wednesday, March 18th, um, last Friday, we made the corporate decision across our four offices um, to go remote completely. Um, and we you know, did this on, on the direction of the CDC here in Canada and, and other you know, World Health Organization where social distancing became important. Um, and I think this is, I hate to use the word advantage, I think this is the opportunity for technology companies such as ourselves who have embedded the equipment to be remote. Um, you know, our, our head office holds about uh, 60 people. We have our development office that holds another 20 or so people. 
who all go into that office or had gone into that office every day and work collaboratively on behalf of our partners. But we built incredible technologies. You know, the, the Zoom meeting that you and I are on today for this podcast is a great example of it. We use it every day. Um, so we did make the decision to go remote. Um, I am impressed, quite honestly, with how well our team has, uh, has adopted it um, and brought it on. We you know, had some foreshadowing of it and did talk as a management team on if we had to do it, what would it look like? Did we have any deficiencies? And quite honestly, we didn't. Um, you know, we have this we have this great branded background that we use on our on our uh, on our Zoom meetings. Um, it, so it hasn't created a lot of limitations. And I did a webinar with our director of partner success just earlier this morning, and talking to him afterwards, he said, "Look, I'm I'm actually being as productive and sometimes more productive with my team since the move to remote than I am when I'm sitting and they literally sit in the same office." Uh, together. So uh, we're trying to draw the best out of it. I think our last advantage is because we deal with partners all over the globe, uh, we are used to communicating remotely as well, just into our partner base um, with our community of partners, with the prospects we're looking at asset lifecycle management. So I think we as an industry are probably prepared better than most, if not the best, um, to take on what, what we're going through globally here. Yeah, no, I understand. I mean, uh, I, I hate to say this because I don't sound sympathetic, but my situation hasn't changed at all. I, I work solely in my office. Employees work outside the office. So we're very lucky that we have the technologies available to do that today. Um, you know, many companies are just trying to get experienced at, at introducing that for various you know, levels of their employees. Um, any other impact you've seen from the changes you've made so far? I know it's only been a few days, but... Um, you, know, you mentioned a few things, but is there any you know, challenges people are running into or are you making adaptions? We're watching closely. It's, it's, it's ironic, Brian. I mean, I've, I've, the last three businesses I've been involved with, I've literally been the remote person. Um, and I, it's not different with Warranty Masters. We have offices all over, but I'm at my home office. Today will all remain for the, for the foreseeable future. But you, you create a, almost a sense of anxiety, even though I'm very used to doing this and operating, operating businesses this way. There, I think we, we bring a lot of the anxiety onto ourselves. It was good to hear from team members um, you know, all around the globe that, hey, things are, things are continuing. So they're seeing it as well. And that, for me, was, was important. Um, I think how we're communicating with partners is going to be critically important and anything we can do to help them. But I, I think you'll agree we're you know we're in a, we're in a good place. I've got a uh, you know a son with with asthma and he works in a retail location in, in in telco and you know we had huge concerns for him. So it's not as easy for him, for example, to just say I'm going to work from remote location because he works at the mall. So I think we're in a unique position. I think you know again I've, I've spent a little bit of time over the weekend looking back on what we've accomplished as an industry over the last ten or fifteen years we've gone remote with our services, with our business models, with our proactive. So I think in many ways, um, you know, we've been somewhat preparing, obviously not for, for this tragedy, but uh, have been organically preparing for something like this or better prepared for something like this, I would say, uh, because of the changes we've made as an industry. Great. So I know we've been talking about warranty master. What effects you've been talking to partners and others, but what effects do you see on our industry during this period, Dan? Yeah, I think it's, it's too early to tell. I mean, the absolute economic uh, catastrophe that, that is, uh, that is upon us here. There, there's no arguing that, um, you know, both uh, in Canada here and, and I know in the, in the U S the, the bailouts have, have started. So the impact on small medium business is yet to be seen. I think, all we can do is continue to do what we do for our customers. I've seen, talked to a couple of partners who are pivoting towards helping their SMB customers migrate to remote workers. You know, as I said, we're well prepared. We have the equipment, are ready to go. Um, are all the SMBs? No, they're probably not. So this is a time where our service and our network, I was watching CNN just prior to jumping on this with you, and they were talking about how vitally important you know, the, the frontline workers are uh, emergency services, uh, the supply chain, and they literally said IT. Um, and it is vitally important. I don't think 5G can come any, any faster or more timely than right now. We are going to rely on this 
uh, infrastructure for communication. My, uh, my wife enjoyed a wine party with a couple of her other her friends uh, over, you know, FaceTime last night. So, uh, it, yeah, I think, I think the bandwidth is going to be going up for all of us. Virtual socializing. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's an interesting one. Um, yeah, I know I've seen, and I think there's going to be some financial concerns too. I've seen some of the forums uh, just yesterday and today about, you know, clients already asking about delay payments and we'll have a lot of things to talk about, I think in the future, but, uh, overall I'm seeing, you know, most MSPs are, are humming along pretty well and, and doing the best they can do to help put more people remote that can be obviously not all the positions are, but it's a, uh, it's an interesting time. Uh, another thing that, and I know you and I have attended a couple of events and conferences together over the years. Um, what have you seen happening short term other than the cancellations and what do you expect to happen long term? I know it's, uh, there's a lot of variables going on. Well, I, again, I, I think uh, the, the events and, and the communities that have, you know, Robin Robbins, um, IT Nation, EMEA, you know, I was scheduled to be in four countries in the next uh, 45 days. Um, all of those have been canceled, moved to, to virtual. So I think everybody's pivoting as best they can. Um, you know, I had an email from, from Robin Robbins today about what they're expecting to do. We were a gold sponsor uh, for her, her upcoming boot camp, which has now been moved to virtual. Um, so I think we're all pivoting. It, it is an enormous change. I mean, we as a business rely on these events to get out and get face to face with, with our partners and uh, the industry. So can that be replaced with, with virtual? Certainly not to the same extent, but that, that is what we're left with today. So I think the viability of doing what we can do virtually is there. We'll take advantage of it and take this opportunity to maybe perfect more of that. <clears throat> you know, I did a, an AUVIC event just a, a number of weeks ago, which was a virtual uh, event, just, but not planned because of the, the condition we're in globally here. It was done to be virtual and it was, it was enormously successful. Um, they did a great job. So I think there, there's obviously a downside. Um, I, for one, certainly, you know, spent a lot of my time at these events just socializing and having open conversations with, with the industry and with the channel and with partners, gaining as much feedback as I can. Um, and that can't be done in a virtual sh setting when it's all presentation. Um, so definitely we'll miss that. Um, but, you know, jumping on the phone with, with partners uh, can be done. So let's keep the communication going best we can. Yeah, well, from my OTS perspective, I know we cancel next week's. We didn't cancel next week's. We rescheduled next week's uh, right. event in Phoenix until uh, November, which will give us plenty of time uh, to make sure that everybody is, has things taken care of and we can focus back on things uh, at that yeah. point. But we're looking to do some additional virtual events and panels to help the MSP community, especially on the security side um, and IoT side. There's a lot of things we have going, and we're going to step it up to – to provide some a little different things too, so we'll we'll provide a little additional visual uh, right. visual aids when we do this. So yeah, we'll 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 tailor it what we can do uh, to help our MSP audience. So let's take a step back um, now. I think, but we're not going to solve the world's problems. We're we're doing the best we can, obviously, in our own little corner. But how how is the value of warranties application impacted by the current global condition? Yeah, it, it's it's interesting, and certainly there is no interest in being opportunistic here. This is about servicing uh, partners and and helping them service their customers. But there there are, as I, again I shared with you, I've done a lot of reflection on on the two thousand and eight downturn, and and certainly after nine eleven, um, what can we do to help partners? And I think in many cases we've started to prepare for that, as I mentioned, in moving to a managed services model specific to what Warranty Master we're trying to do for our partners. Those who haven't taken advantage of, of some of the application has to offer, um, I think that's an obligation for us to continue to share that story. Um, you know, we have partners who have done a, a much better job than others extending warranties and, and allowing, you know, those applications and, and servers and things to be under service warranty contracts. Um, they can get more proactive with the hardware replacement, that eliminating as much on-site as we can by, by managing the hardware and the assets uh, remotely when they come to end of life and just having the procurement process to have those things changed. I also think that 
it's going to be even more critically important for budgeting purposes. Uh, many of our partners use the data in the application to help their customers budget for hardware rotation. Now, even if those arguably those budgets might go down, so how what are they going to look like? How can we get back to uh, where we want to be fiscally? Um, and what does it look like? And when is, when is this equipment really going to die on me? Or what can be done to extend it? So, you know, I'm looking for the, the silver lining, but I think there are some, some real ones there that we've got to help our customers now better manage the assets they have, better manage their procurement um, budgeting practices, um, and make sure that devices are under warranty and serviced appropriately if they're ready to replacement or if they're not. Uh, I think communication is the key. It's, I think it's been the, the key cornerstone of managed services is, you know, this is what we're doing and how we're doing to keep the continuity of your IT environment up and running at peak performance. And I think this, you know, puts a, a bit of a, a focus on it when it comes to the IT equipment. If they're going to not re replace it, what are we going to do? When are we going to replace it if we do? Um, and what's the budgetary component of that? So, uh, I think we have a lot to offer there, and I know a lot of the partners who are taking full advantage of the asset data collection and information will be, frankly, in a better position to help service their customers when it comes to this stuff uh, than others trying to do it manually. Yeah, I'm also wondering, you know, over the past two or three weeks, that for those that saw some of these things coming, if the remote or mobile devices, laptops, and other sales increased, um, love to yeah. see the, the information coming from some of the distributors to see what was going on there. Or if it hasn't, do you think after this, you're going to see more companies going, we need to invest uh, in those type of devices as well to make sure that well, we don't I, get I, I have, I have heard, I have heard exactly that. And, and I've seen, again, a lot of progressive IT service providers reaching out saying, help us move you to remote environments. And in many cases, that's going to drive up the number of assets that are now inside managed. the network and managed on a, on a regular basis. There's security risk there. There is operational risk. There is, um, you know, again, I was on the phone with my service manager who's, who's moved home this morning. And I said, well, where's your, where's your nice warranty master background? And his piece of hardware was not compatible to put up this background. Um, so there, there's a perfect example is we're, we're trying to make sure our brand and professionalism is, is delivered through, despite the time that we're in here, you know, he wasn't able to do it. Um, so even here at warranty master, we had a deficiency in hardware to be able to do this. So I think that's a, an obligation, an opportunity, a responsibility, whatever you want to call it for the IT service providers, but it does ultimately come down to the hardware. Um, you know, and I, I've seen this. I've seen this firsthand since joining Warranty Master, uh, coming up on a year ago, and, and you know, I maybe lost that vision through the RMM days and, and the password security days at Passportal. Uh, uh, hardware remains at the cornerstone of, of these infrastructures and what we're managing. So it's not dead yet, is what you're saying. It's it's yeah. The importance seems to climb. It's just shifting. Maybe it's not incredible. So yeah. And, and I think, you know, we, we've talked cloud, we've talked remote services, we've talked all of these things. Um, the cloud is maybe, maybe it's having an impact on the number of servers in an SMB environment right. uh, long term, but nobody's throwing out, you know, an $8,000 server to move to the cloud tomorrow. Um, many are moving to the cloud, obviously, but that is paled in comparison to the number of new IP enabled devices coming into the networks. The IoT, the imaging, the, you know, I, I sit at my desk here. I'm looking at one, two, three, four, five. I have six devices on my on my desk. You and I are old enough in this industry to, to remember when 25 devices inside a network was considered a good size SMB customer. Yeah, definitely. I know I was looking through uh, our, our uh, one of our community church buildings this week and we were counting the number of devices in there because we were looking to do kind of an assessment ourselves it's amazing when you think about it you don't think they're high tech and, and they're really right. not but security cameras and when you when you go through all of the different things that um, that are ip connected today in any building it's yeah it's and, and, there, and there's bandwidth considering you know i were talking you and i were talking about this before we went live here uh i've got a kid home for a child home from university and one obviously out of out of middle school right now and i said hey i'm doing a podcast with iota today 
you guys know gaming for an hour. Um, you know, just so there, there is an impact for, for all of us during this time. Um, and when we come out of it, I think the impact will be, will continue. Uh, the need for bandwidth, the need for operational maturity, the need for, for the best hardware, um, it, it's such an integral part. You know, Spiceworks, we, we've been talking about a report that was produced by, by Spiceworks this year of what's the number one IT uh, budget allocation uh, for SMB in 2020. Now, this was obviously done in late 2019 and early 2020, but the number one, and I run a poll, say, you know, is it security? Is it cloud? Is it hardware? Is it software? For the, what's the one budgetary item when it comes to IT that's the, the highest? And it was frankly hardware. Um, and what's driving that, you know, pr again, prior to what we're going through here today, um, what's driving that is the SMB's understanding they need to recycle older equipment. Um, I hire a lot of phenomenal millennials. Um, I will tell you they get the best equipment every time. It's a part of our hiring process here for, for our business to say, here's the equipment you get. We can't give them a four-year-old laptop. Um, they probably would make, you know, hey, I like Warranty Master, I like what you guys are doing, but this job opportunity over here is giving me, you know, better equipment to work on every day. It becomes a factor. So. There's from bandwidth to longevity to operational efficiency to hiring practices, you know, all the hardware we have sitting in front of us here is, is a part of our daily lives. Well, you had mentioned, I know previously too, there's a security implication too for uh, hardware asset management, uh, cycling through, making sure everything's compatible. Can you go into that a little bit for us? There's lots. Again, it's it's interesting coming from, you know, being being security-minded and focused for the last five years uh, prior to joining Warranty Master. You know, you look at security. It, well, does out-of-date equipment get patched? Is it being serviced appropriately? If we're not doing asset data collection in real time, do we even know what assets are being applied into a network and what security vulnerability they may pose? How many IP-enabled devices are being added? You know, uh, you and I, again, have had conversations historically on mobile device management and the impact that mobile devices were having on small businesses years ago. Um, that's, that just continues to grow. So security, I think, first and foremost, starts with knowledge and identifying what's there. Uh, there's lots of remediation and access control and password management and you know, patching and, and all of the, the, the other security, you know, functions. Um, but if you don't know a device is sitting in a network, um, you're unlikely to be able to secure it appropriately if you don't actually know it's there. Right. One of the, one of the big trending problems, especially with IoT, is, uh, is having those, uh, those apps all of a sudden start appearing um, yes. in the network if you're not watching. Yeah. So, how do you see the SMB being affected and, and what can service providers do to help customers during this time uh, we're dealing with right now, Dan? I, I think we touched on a lot of it, Brian. I, I think knowledge is everything. Service is the value we're delivering as, a, as an industry always. Um, so whether it's helping an SMB uh, move to remote working and making sure they're operationally uh, effective doing that, making sure your remote workers have the, the you know, the access they need, the devices they need, the security that they need, uh, the bandwidth, you know, capability. Um, I think, as always, and certainly in times like this, the SMB needs their IT service provider and their MSP uh, more than ever. Um, you know, it's, it's easy when things are going great, when we have a 5.9 SLA and we've built out the network and it's secure and it's humming along. Um, these are the times that your customers need you the most. And I've been, you know, again, just in the last days and weeks, uh, absolutely impressed with the with the partners that I've spoken to or seen in social and, and some of the things that they're doing. And I think it really centers around that. Uh, I, you know, for our partners, uh, we're playing a small piece of that, but I think a vital one, again, as, as hardware expands, as, as the need for uh, knowing what assets need to be retired when and what budgeting capabilities. I think that's going to be a longer term issue as we come out of whatever economic downturn uh, we're going to go through here. How do I plan for, you know, the, the largest allocation of budget is, is hardware expenditure. You know, their data is probably their most valuable, 
but right behind that, what they're spending their money on these days is their hardware and their software. And those are two critical components, I think. It's our obligation, opportunity, and responsibility as IT service providers to make sure we're managing and, and communicating as well as we can with our, with our customers. Yeah, I'm wondering what role efficiency is going to play after this, too. You talked about you know economic outfall from this. I, I talked to an MSP yesterday that was you know worried about getting 10 employees for their client moved remotely and, and paying for extra laptops and things to do that. And they had to, they were implementing VoIP to help in one way too, in order right. to to work externally. And he showed how hey, if we get you on VoIP and off the existing contract they were using with one of the AT and T's, it's like we can save you money on that. That in the long you know over the next six months it'll pay for this. And that was a serious discussion because they were worried about how to pay for it. So you got to be really creative, I think, to figure out. Um, in this case, it actually fell in. It's like they needed VoIP, and it ended up paying. So you could do some of the similar things across the board with other solutions. Right. Uh, how have the recent developments changed your roadmap? What are you guys doing looking forward as Warranty Master? It, it's interesting. It's uh, we're doubling down on a couple of areas. You know, automation, our our our, our story and our value, and, and what partners, frankly, have communicated back to me uh, on what we're able to deliver with this application and the impact on their business. I think is just tightened in this time. Um, operational maturity and operational efficiency internally for the IT service provider. Um, the ability to both do sales forecasting internally with that data and budgeting are, are two critical important ones. Um, and then the ability to report, the ability to share with a customer real valuable reporting and information, simplify, easy to understand, not speeds and feeds, but you know, I share this story all the, all the time that I'd heard about the value of the reporting of just the assets. Again, very what might seem very mundane, um, but you know, I hear heard from from our partners saying, "Oh, wow, this is really impacting." You know, I'm a better MSP in my customers' eyes just because of the data this application is letting me show. And I remember I sat on a plane uh, being de-iced in in Toronto one day on December second, and we got our report in of our own infrastructure. And there was a couple of red dots on it, and it immediately forced me to look at, well, wait a minute, why does Warranty Master have anything out of warranty inside our own environment? And sure enough, we had two laptops that were end of life and being flagged in our own reporting capability. Um, and it made me dig deeper as I sat and watched the, the wing get sprayed. I said, well, wait a minute, gee, you know, I, I've been CEO here for about uh, seven months. Maybe I should look into our expenditure of hardware. And I did that. I realized, wow, we've got a lot of equipment to buy in 2021. You know, we will be coming end of life, 21, 22. Um, I, I better make sure we get that in the budget. Uh, so I lived what partners had told me the value of Warranty Master was. And it, it's cathartic when you go through that. It's, you know, one thing to share a partner's story. But when you're actually going through it as, as the customer in this, in this sense, um, it was really valuable to see. Yeah, that insight uh, is useful when you're looking at the replacement side, but it's also you know, profitable for MSPs. Obviously, that's not going to be the key focus for the next few months. Is Obviously, I have to make a profit, but at the same point, is creating efficiency for, for partners, getting their security locked down, getting their devices managed. Yeah. Um, it's going to be an interesting year, but this is probably a perfect time for them once they get everybody settled in and working to, to kind of reflect back and look at ways that they can tweak their systems right. and, and uh, refine their clients offerings right now. Yeah, it's a great point, Brian. And we we talk about it often is that, Hey, you can drive top line revenue, with, and, but it's not simply self-serving when you are replacing a aging piece of hardware, you are improving that network. You are improving the user experience. You are improving their operational efficiency. Again, I've got one of my guys who can't have this background because we frankly haven't equipped them with, with a machine that will allow it. Um, so these are the kind of things that that adds value. Sure, it drives your top line revenue. Wonderful. But you know, no managed service provider is driving top line revenue without delivering value to customers. Um, so there, there is synergy there. It's one of the reasons I love this industry. It, it is truly in um, from vendor to MSP down to customer. 
we're all in it together trying to solve SMB problems. Uh, we're trying to enable MSPs to do a better job to service their customers. And with that, it, they need to run healthy, organ, you know, profitable organizations themselves. And, and you know, I'm, I'm very thankful and blessed to be, be a part of that equation and, and helping in any way we can. So, Dan, people are probably going to be a little reluctant to, to start having those renewal discussions. What are your thoughts as far as, you know, how can MSPs approach that discussion? You know, maybe not today, but in a few days with their clients to, uh, to uh, you know, do the things they need to do. Yeah, there's two things. Budgeting is certainly one. Uh, getting proactive on, on capital expenditure um, is doing a service to your customer. The second on renewal, when it comes to warranties on servers, you know, we hear that there's a staggering statistic out there, Brian, that, that over 60% of servers in the marketplace are actually out of warranty today. It means they're not under a service contract. They're not potentially getting patched. Uh, when they go down and they have a higher likelihood to go down because they're out of warranty, it means they're, they're older, um, it's a cost for the MSP and it's downtime for the customer. So here's a great example of a win-win. If a server is placed under a warranty service contract, which you can do right inside our, our application at a, at a great price and a better profit, but it's actually helping your customer with their operational uptime. They can't afford to be down now at all, right? It, and, it, and arguably they can't ever, but certainly when you're remote. I, you know, again, we're remote. We did a web, web broadcast this morning. I've got marketing people trying to help us get set up. The co-presenter that I'm with, there was some added complexity there, even for us that we went through. So helping your customer get, in a, you know, you're not going to maybe replace that expensive server. You're going to extend the life of it. Let's make sure it's under a warranty service contract. And here's why. And, and again, mutual beneficial revenue, margin, uptime, um, you know, continuity, it's, it's really a win-win. So I think there's, again, not, not looking to profit or, or grow from the, the horrific events of what we're going through globally, but there is opportunity to better serve um, everybody through this uh, using the applications that are available. And that you hit on that business continuity part of it too. I think that's a part that um, everybody's evaluating at this point, finding out a, did the other systems working and B, what can they do better um, to ensure that they do? So that definitely makes sense to, uh, to make your hardware management part of the yeah, business. There, there's, there's a, there's a running line in warranty master that, that we talk about a lot, which is performance degrades with age. Um, a lot of my team members like to point at me when they, <laughs> that for some reason, I don't like um, that one. And no, nor do I, but when it comes to the IT environment, absolutely true. And when it comes to plus 50 year old, uh, channel veterans, yes, it's probably true as well. But, um, when, when it comes to IT, performance does degrade with age, and, and it's important you have that conversation with your customer. Um, if you're going to allow older equipment, specifically servers or, or network devices, then let's get them under a service contract because we do, we should expect them to fail more often. They are going to fail more often. And to, to allow that to happen and not have them under a service contract is, is a real deficiency and not in the best interest of your customer or your business is the ITSP. Gotcha. No, excellent insight. Um, obviously when we're talking, we, we run through time very quickly, uh, kind of at the end here. Any final thoughts before we sign off today, Dan, you'd like to share whether it's about this topic or, or uh, obviously, uh, you know, hardware renewals and, and the things that warranty master hey, does. Uh, I, I, I think the, the top topic for all of us right now is just getting through uh, whatever we're about to go through for the amount of time we're going to go through it, Brian. Um, it's, you know, this is a global, global problem. Um, and I think all we can do in our own way is to help our customers, help our neighbors, you know, help in any way we can. Um, so, you know, that, that's what we're, we're looking for ways to do that um, with Warranty Master, with our partners, but extending it out past that, you know, what we can do to, to, to share in community and, uh, and each other. I think that's the most important. And from that, we'll be better set up to, to come out the other end of all of this and, and carry on when the time is right. Yep. Yep. No, I think it's a perfect time to help the neighbors uh, go to the blood bank. If you can do that, uh, do whatever you can to be prepared. Uh, MSPs are awesome at that. So 
Uh, and wash your hands. Don't forget, wash, wash your, your hands. hands. Wash your hands. <laughs> if you have sanitizer, you know, there's a killing to be made there too. If you're making that, I've, I've got my yeah. little one with me. Yeah, yeah, that, that would be the best probably business tip we could give yeah. Yeah. is to get into hand, hand sanitizer manufacturing. Yeah, that's not my forte. I'll stick with what I'm doing, but uh, awesome. Well, uh, on behalf of IOTA, I sincerely thank Dan Wensley from Warranty Master for sharing his insight on the current situation with COVID-19 and running a channel business and remote work. Um, we're all, we're all, I think, experiencing that in one form or another uh, this week and, and hopefully for not too much longer. But we appreciate all of our listeners. Encourage you to uh, tune into the next episode of Secure Connections podcast. We're going to be some, doing some additional ones over the next few weeks and um, some security panels to try to keep everybody up and up and on the latest and provide some additional educational insight for everyone while they have a few minutes, hopefully to do that. Um, we wish you all a safe and secure day. And I definitely mean that in this case too. Uh, take care and we'll talk to you shortly. Thanks, Brian.